Hello and welcome to episode 19 for our Let's Play of The Lord of the Rings. In the last episode, we looked in the mirror of Galadriel and we began our quest for the five magical items that she assigned us, uh, all in the hopes that it will bring us closer to rescuing the ring bearer. So we're going to continue exploring the rest of uh, the city here. So if we go to the northwest, we can find this house. Attached to the tree is a rope ladder that leads up to one of the flats where the elves live. But, but because of this tree right here, you kind of have to uh, approach it at a weird angle. A wounded elf rests against a desk, gazing out into the forest as if looking for no one else can see. It's kind of a weird uh, sentence. I am Elring. I need your help. The elf lifts himself painfully and begins his tale. A few weeks ago I had strange dreams of a glowing bird trapped in a cage of ice. Everywhere around it was ice. It was obvious the bird was trapped and needed my help. He groans and then continues. The dreams did not stop, so I sought the guidance of Galadriel. She brought me to the Hermir, and we saw a secret passageway in the eastern part of the Redhorn Pass. We saw a huge monster made of ice, with the bird from my dreams imprisoned in ice. The ice monster seemed to draw strength from the bird, which it used to increase the power of the winters in the mountains. I immediately asked Galadriel to give me permission to battle this monster, but she refused, saying that no elf of Lorien was destined to prevail against it. The dreams did not stop again, but did not come again, but still I do not forget this. So I left, alone, for the Redhorn. There I was attacked by orcs and injured, and so I came back to Lorien. If the orcs of the Misty Mountains have sealed Redhorn Pass, then both Rivendell and Lorien are in peril. If the spirit of Caradhras, has, as Galadriel has named this monster, grows stronger, then eventually it will bring us the cold of Morgoth upon us all. It must be defeated. Redhorn Pass must be freed. Well, we know from experience that the Redhorn Pass um, was indeed blocked by snow. So maybe in uh, freeing that, we can uh, open up the pass to use again once we free that bird. Um... But we can come to the southeast here, and there should be another uh, flet. And this should be the library. This must be the librarian here, Rumil. I am Rumil, the librarian of Lorien. How might I help you? Maybe you know something about the books? But he doesn't. Um, there is much lore here that, you, that may prove useful to you. Search carefully and read thoroughly. Uh, ah, Lorien, Lorien the Fair, would that you would ever en endure forever, and Malorn trees bloom eternal, alas. I don't think he tells us anything too important, so uh, we can read the books here. The scroll is dated a hundred years ago and says, The fortress of Dol Guldur is ten levels tall, from its deepest pit to its tallest tower. Within its fortress are many orcs and dark magics, but its most terrifying occupant is, an, is this necromancer, who is indeed Sauron of Mordor, given new shape again. I urge the White Council to press for an assault. It is to be hoped that the revelation will make Sauron less intractable. The scroll is signed G, obviously the symbol of Gandalf. Well, that must be um, back when our Uncle Bilbo was on his travels. We know that uh, Gandalf left and explored Dol Guldur. But it looks like the White Council didn't uh, heed his advice. A handsome, tall, young elf sleeps upon the ground. As you approach, he awakens and smiles. Members of the quest, I just had the oddest dream. In it, I saw the east grow dark until the blackness was absolute, and the blackness spread until it overwhelmed Lorien. All seemed lost, but suddenly a light came from the west and told me that you would come soon. Give me a riddle to tell you. Converse with me further, and I shall tell it. Esteladel, I think is how you say that. I have a riddle on which you must question me. Who is the greatest enemy of all? I think anything you uh, type in the question box, he'll assume it you're uh, answering the riddle. But the answer to the riddle is actually despair. That is correct. Never lose hope. When you head into danger, even an enemy might be a reliable guide. Well, if he's having prophetic dreams, maybe that uh, also is a sign of something that's going to come. But now we've done everything in uh, the city here. So we can uh, leave back, <coughs> excuse me, by the western gate. 
On this piece of grass, a young elf maid sits. She is not frightened of you, but her presence has not changed. But your presence has not changed her melancholy demeanor. I sit in the shadows, she says, and I think of the great shadow to come. Lorien is doomed. The shadow has won. Well, we don't need that kind of negativity in our lives, so I'm not even going to talk to her. Um, but as I was saying, we need to exit by the western gate because we're going to. Uh, who do we have here? But we're going to leave um, and explore the lands uh, outside of Lorien. This flat is one of Lorien's guard posts, cunningly hidden in the tree branches. A tall, strong elf, obviously one of the commanders of Lorien, looks at you and introduces himself as Calabreth, son of Dagnos. I think Galadriel said we could take uh, her commanders with us, so uh, might as well take whatever his name was. Calabreth. He has a bow, so I guess we'll uh, equip that. But we're going to explore the lands uh, outside of Lorien. I know I've said that a couple of times. But we need to leave by the western gate uh, in order to get back to the mountains, first of all. Because the first thing we're going to do is open up the pass of Caradhras. And we'll defeat the spirit there and free the bird. So you'll just want to cross over the two bridges. <coughs> Excuse me. And if you uh, continue to the west, we should uh, come to the Misty Mountains before uh, all too long. And here's the, the pass. And that's why we hung on to the warm clothes and the Miravur, in case we ever need to um, go through this pass again. And once you open it up, you can use it to go back to uh, Rivendell or Bree or the Shire, anywhere to the west. No a little lag. All right, there we go. And this is the snowdrift that blocked us before. So once you get to that, what you'll want to do is uh, come along the northern wall here. And uh, he has no skills, really. Uh, but anyways, uh, go a couple mm -hmm. steps to the east. And um, it's hard to tell where exactly it is, so you just mm -hmm. need to kind of move one spot at a time until you find it. On a ledge above you, you notice a cave entrance. So uh, that's what you're looking for, and we can climb up there. And we're in some sort of a little ice cave here. There are tracks on the floor of this cave, slightly larger than hobbit-sized, made by flapping feet. In the corner of the cave are the gnawed bones of a small orc, as well as an odd-shaped key made from a strange black metal. Well, maybe we'll um, find w the lock that key goes to, and uh, since we found it with orc bones, uh, might be something uh, orcish. We'll come to the ladder here. Not since the days of Angband has the world known such cold. Ages ago, an evil spirit entered the Misty Mountains and begrudged all creatures who traveled on his slopes, for it viewed the mountains as its own personal property. And as the ages passed, the spirit of Caradhras grew colder and colder, and it begrudged all warmth, and plotted to destroy it, and so the spirit Caradhras ca captured some of the warmth of spring, in the form of a bird, and imprisoned it in a cage of ice. Since then the mountains have been subject to the unchallenged will of Caradhras, and its malice has grown as great as its might. This cave is the dwelling place of cruel Caradhras, spirit of the Redhorn. Imprisoned in a pack of ice is the bird of spring. The great coldness seems shocked that anyone would dare challenge it. Fool! It hisses like blowing snow rolling upon ice. Dare you to challenge the power of the winter chill? It howls like a blizzard. First you climb my slopes, now you invade my home. Die! The voice growls like breaking ice. Well, now all we need to do is uh, defeat uh, Caradhras here. I don't think Mary's close enough. Oh, that's kind of lame. All he has is a sword. I thought he'd be using some uh, winter magic or something. And you can uh, take a sword if you want, but um, I'm not going to. The spirit is broken. It rises up like a blizzard, then melts into a pool of black water. A west wind rises and blows its fragments into nothingness. 
Rogers is now defeated, but his works are not at an end. A brown bird remains imprisoned in a sheath of ice. Oh, I said I wasn't going to take the sword. Oh, fuck. I don't have a chance to. Oh, well. I'm sure uh, some other swords will um, come up at some point. And uh, I noticed that Boromir didn't have his uh, sword equipped. And uh, Aragorn took a bit of damage, so I'll use some of his Athelus. And then uh, we can actually use uh, the torch to melt the ice that the bird is trapped in. The warmth melts the ice which imprisoned the bird of spring. Flee, the bird tells you, for the gluttony of winter upon the red horn is now at an end, but a far more important task lies ahead. Once you do that, the path is uh, free. It's open to go back, like I said, to the to Rivendell or Bree or anywhere to the west. But this is one of the last uh, chances you'll have to go back to those places. Um, the game's pretty non-linear in that you can go back and finish quests and stuff. Um, but once we cross the Anduin River, which is to the east of Lorien, once you uh, sail across that, uh, you won't be given the opportunity to go back anymore. So uh, if you have anything you want to take care of back there, uh, now's probably the time to do it. We have a few more things we're going to do in Lorien. Um, we still have some of the magical items to search for, like Galadriel told us about. So to find the rest of those, we're going to keep exploring a kind of a clockwise pattern around the outside of Lorien. But you will have to cross this uh, bridge, the first one, to go any further north. And so we can just follow the river banks here. And uh, to the to the right, that's the uh, edge of the forest. So just to give you an idea of where we are. And um, we're looking for uh, a little area. We have the mountains here, and there's going to be a little pass coming up, a little narrow place between the mountains right here and the forest, you can see. You notice that this is the sort of terrain where orcs like to station snipers and ambush travelers. Maybe if we uh, sneak, then they won't be able to catch us. We have some more ruins here. The mournful ruins stand alone. The dwarves built them long ago, and like most things of dwarven manufacture, endure, even when the dwarves themselves were slaughtered long ago. Maybe there's something we can find in the ruins. Cunningly hidden among the ruins is a horn of purest silver. This must be uh, one of the items that Galadriel told us to find. So we almost have all of them. We have four of the items. And now we'll uh, keep going along the northern side of the forest now. And there's not too much, uh, actually nothing really, uh, to the north of the forest that's um, useful at all. So we'll just continue uh, to the eastern side. But we should be getting uh, something we can do coming up pretty soon here. You have come to the site of a recent battlefield. Many orcs lie dead. But the elves who fought here were all slain, save one. The orcs have an encampment, swamp. The elf is clearly dying from many wounds. Nothing can save his life. They must be killed before they can set up a camp. Unless you do so now, the quest might never cross the... With that, the elf gives his last breath. Boom! Well, our next mission is going to be to take out the uh, orc encampment. Although I'm not really sure why... Um, there's only one orc here. The fury of the attack seems to have alerted other foes to your presence here. Yeah, usually you get attacked by um, like six at a time. So I don't know what's, uh, what's going on here. And then it alerts more to your attack. And we have two this time. We should be getting uh, pretty close to beating this Olog high here. Yeah, like I said, I don't know why we only have a 
one of each to deal with. Usually there's like six enemies or so, but I guess better for us, right? So fierce is your ability in battle that the remainder of your foes are dismayed. Several minutes later, they press in for an attack. When the armies of Lorien arrive, the orcs are driven into the river. None return to Dol Guldur. You have won a great victory. And we get a bit of a stat boost uh, for our characters, I think, when we do that. Yeah, we're working with some pretty high uh, health and stuff here. Um, so you'll, that's something you'll definitely want to do. And I think this will be a good place to bring this episode to a close. And um, so next time we will be uh, exploring the rest of the lands around Lorien. And we'll finish collecting the five uh, items. And um, we'll sail uh, east to reclaim the ring bearer. And we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do all that in the next episode.